Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's Women in Astronomy, we are going to talk about Helen Sawyer Hogg and look at her contributions to astronomy. So let's take a look at this and so what we know about her, she lived from 1905 to 1993 and was born in Massachusetts. She attended Mount Holyoke College and she went to Harvard but received her PhD from Radcliffe in 1931 because at the time Harvard would not grant uh, graduate degrees to women. Now her scientific work that she did, she was primarily known for working on variable stars. And in fact, for a couple of years in 1939 through 1941, she was the president of the American Association of Variable Star Observers. So while things are more automated today, previously you would have to take lots of images of stars to be able to look and watch for their brightnesses. So some of the things that she would look at would be things like globular clusters such as the one pictured here. And this is one that she uh, looked at and actually had added to the Messier catalog of objects. Now a lot of that was looking again at variables in the globular star clusters but you would have to take multiple pictures and then you'd have to look back and forth between the two to identify stars as variable. So what did the star change in brightness? Well sometimes stars change brightness and it's very easy to see. You can see a very distinct change in certain types of variables. They can get significantly brighter or significantly fainter. The bright star Algol in Perseus is one of those where you can actually, if you know when to look, you can see that it gets significantly fainter. Many stars don't change by that much or change over a much longer period of time. So they're harder to find. So you have to take many images of them and kind of flip back and forth between pictures that might have been taken weeks or months apart to see and identify those stars as variable. And then once you did that, you could actually put them into catalogs. And one of the things she worked on was put it doing a lot of catalogs of variable stars. How did this help us? What did this teach us? Well, one of the things that we really looked at with this is the, our Milky Way galaxy. How do we determine the size and structure of our Milky Way galaxy? Well, one thing we can use are the Cepheid variable stars. And you may recall that we talked about this previously, that there is a period luminosity relationship that Henrietta Leavitt came up with that determined that there was a relationship between the period of a Cepheid variable, how long it takes to vary in brightness, and its actual intrinsic brightness brightness itself. That means by observing the period, you get its true brightness, how much energy it's putting out. And that allows you to determine its distance. So if you recall, this was key as a distance indicator, a way to determine distances to stars. And that's something that is very hard to determine. We're doing a lot better on it now than in the past. But determining distances is something very difficult. Once you can do that, you can learn a lot more about things like the size and structure of our own galaxy, things that we did not know well before this. And this bigger study of variable stars really helped with that. And as I previously mentioned, she was the president for a couple of years of the American Association of Variable Star Observers and did become a full professor at the University of Toronto in 1957. So again, her strongest contributions were really the observations of variable stars over a number of decades. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary here. And what we've looked at is that uh, we know that Helen Sawyer Hogg was born in Massachusetts in 1905. She got her PhD from Radcliffe College in 1931. And she really studied variable stars, especially looking at those in globular star clusters and within our own galaxy to help us understand the size and the structure of our Milky Way. So that concludes this discussion of Helen Sawyer Hogg and her contributions to astronomy. We'll be back again next week to discuss another woman in astronomy. So until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.